<laughs> I found out. Can I, I don't know if it'll translate on audio. But I found out this morning. What, Dan now? does a laser sound that is so convincing. Can you just lean I'm into the mic? I'm gonna close my eyes. Ready? Yeah. Okay. It's the it's, it's the, the reverb. It's the it's weird the reverb. reverb to it. Do it, give it. Get a little closer and do it one more time. How, How cool is that? that? I I don't want to know. I told him not to show the magic. It's like throat singing. <laughs> laser all day. Crazy. Dude. And then you want to back up day. a little and do your machine gun? Jesus, let me go, dude. I'm white Michael Winslow. Come get some. <laughs> Come get some. The voice the voice for mentalist never left me. You've never done Sam. Sam Elliott? Yeah. Oh, God. That's well, cool. there's a time and there's a place. And sometimes there's a time and a place. If you're ever up in the hills of Colorado and your dad is left, well, there's time. <laughs> time to learn voices. Rodney Dangerfield? Rodney's my favorite. Yeah. Gotta find more stuff to do as woke Rodney. <laughs> Wait, what is, what is woke it. Rodney? Like, I'm telling you, you don't have to get any respect to women of color. <laughs> yeah, it's far too long they haven't been getting women of color. I'm telling you, if gender's fluid, then I'm in love with a puddle. <laughs> 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 Of course black lives matter. I'll tell you what doesn't matter. All lives. I got an ex-wife. I got a doctor. Dr. Vinny Boombots. <laughs> yeah. What was the other one that we, we oh, it was like we would do uh, right-wing Bruce Springsteen? Oh, my God. <laughs> He's like, you know, there's a lot of immigrants taking jobs out here. <laughs> like, no, Bruce. Whoa, Bruce. Bruce. Hey, whoa. Brucey Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my daddy used to work at the factory, and then a Guatemalan man took that away from me. <laughs> like, whoa, time out. Time out, Bruce. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you. Citizens stuff. United. It ruined democracy. <laughs> all right, th there's all the voices. Thanks for letting me get my voices out. Yeah, you got to you got to devenom me like a snake. <laughs> <laughs> there were other topics that I want to talk to you guys about today. Mm. Um, topics that would have just set up Dan Soder to do various wrestling voices. That's my whole life, baby. Um, I but was unfortunately, would... I'm going to ruin it and just talk about my thing. Sorry, no, honey. I love it. <laughs> Sorry, honey. I'm your Miss Elizabeth today. Oh. Wow. wow. That that hits different. It doesn't now. it? <laughs> now, pick, now pick me up on your shoulder. No, Katie has to do okay, her macho man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's as, right, that's as good as, right. that's as right. the that's most like it's going to get. He is horse. <laughs> Every impression I do is an impression of Dan's impression. I love it. Yeah, uh, you do a lot good. of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there it is. There it is. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's a limited fake. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's let's talk about Jeopardy. I know. Yeah. Do we have to? I thought these were only if I won. I I <laughs> admire that you showed up. I didn't know I had to do this if I lost. In some ways, this is the episode I'm looking forward to the most. Good. Because I want to know. I can now know everything. Yeah. Um, How did you guys watch this? Oh, we just watched it at home. Yeah. Just had dinner. We just had dinner and watched it. You know, a lovely we had, meal. We had both seen it before. We were both there. So, um, Katie had a good point while watching it last night. She goes, um, athletes don't have to watch the game replayed back to them with I everybody else guys do. for the first time. No, I'm just saying, like, li like oh, the first time, sports yeah. are live for a reason. This is what I yeah. was tickled by yeah. while also being very bummed. Sure. Spoiler alert. You don't have to pretend. The closest I've ever came to being a boxer's wife the next day. I think I've made that analogy with this before, but it truly felt like I was in a gown. And I had a diamond necklace on, and the love of my life was bleeding out of every orifice. <laughs> like it just felt like I was like just sitting there with like velvet gloves on, being like, "Are you okay, baby?" <laughs> but it was fun watching it. I was in the audience for it, and I didn't remember a lot of it. Me right? neither. Me neither. So this one I remembered in. the least about. So we we should, as we always do, recap for people I who lost. missed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't win. I lost the whole... I came in third. I full lost the final. 
But this isn't something she's going to say because this isn't something that Katie does. What? Katie was very sick. Very sick when she recorded that. Mm. And that's not an excuse. I'm just letting you know. But it's like when an, a hockey player reveals, I've had, had a broken rib. broken rib the whole time. I had a punctured lung. She, I got her sick. <laughs> I was very sick. Um, I had a really bad head cold. And then uh, I went back on the road and Katie was like, I th think the day I went to Phoenix, you were like, I'm starting to feel like shit. And I was like, N we knew we knew the finals were Sunday. And the first taping day of, of Jeopardy, so the, the quarterfinals and the semifinals, I had COVID that I got rid of just in time to fly. I was afraid that COVID was going to keep me from doing Jeopardy. And I got I used that Paxlovid and got rid of it in like four days and then had an extra day to get healthy and then flew. So this time I was sick again and I was like, no. And um, it did not clear up quick. It was not COVID, and when? it did not clear it was, up quick. It, there was a nasty cold it going was around. Really awful. When was this? It, uh, November. After Spider Man, came, right after Spider Man. You guys came have out. been sitting on this yeah. for that long. Yeah. Yeah. She and by the way, they did cut the Spider Man thing, which made me mad. Yeah. Because it was great. And it was just they make you t you do a lot of the interview stuff in between. You know, the like, Katie, hey, you're playing for this charity. But and you legitimately you had to think because not only was she sick. But her thumb was hurt. She had hurt her because... So, I, so Spider... This is kind of out of order, but Spider... Ow. Spider-Man right. 2 had come out. Um, Katie, battling technology will be thing. a theme of today's Spider episode. Spider-Man 2 had come out uh, on PlayStation, and I played it too... So they had asked me about how I prepped, and I was like, look, I've been spending my weekends prepping, like learn, memorizing the capitals and countries and stuff. But this last weekend, I let myself take the weekend off and relax. And I just played a video game I'd been really waiting to play for way too long. I sh I sh played it for like a day straight. And, and, to the, and what's funny is I was I was very excited for Spider-Man 2 to come out. Same. Pre-ordered it Obviously. and all this stuff. And I told Katie, she didn't play the, she played the first Spider-Man. She was like, it's hadn't all right. Hadn't played it yet. You, had, you hadn't At played the time, it yet. I hadn't so she yet. was like, I was, I was trying to tell her when, uh, in a down period of her not having a game. I was like, you should try Spider-Man. It's and awesome and we live in manhattan now you oh, can try no. to find a building yeah, yeah, yeah. you can find yourself you can you can who doesn't it, look for the grand theft auto 4 i immediately went to the beer garden in astoria and found where my apartment by the way was. these are my two favorite games <laughs> oh, of all really? time number three is red dead redemption 2 as yes, katie and i, I just so started loves. replaying it love it but, love arthur morgan story okay but yes. so i played the game too much but she got into it in a way where like i was on the road and the game came through and she was like i need a video game and then she texted me and she wrote i got spider-man 2 I don't want to play it though because you were so excited to play it. And I go, no, you should play it. And when I say that she started playing it, she dove in. And by the time I got home from the road, this was like a couple weeks before, she was already 50% of the way through the game. Which like, is insane. She played I really the just had to play game. it. But so I realized uh, that I played it so much that I injured myself. My thumb was red and swollen and throbbing. And I realized that I was potentially had injured myself before my Jeopardy final. So, like, my buzzer thumb the only was not working. appendage that mattered. It was like in exactly. a sitcom where... <laughs> so Katie, where for for uh, the podcast audience, yeah, you can go dude, see YouTube and DraftKings Network. <laughs> Katie Nolan's objectively, not an excuse, actually swollen so, stuff. What's so funny is it really was like a sitcom, you know, when someone wakes up and there's like a big event in the episode and they go like, oh no, my eyebrows are blonde. Yeah. And like the whole point of the episode is them hiding <laughs> it. That was Katie when she woke up. She was like, my thumb. And then I brought back the nastiest head cold either one of us has had in 10 years. Mm -hmm. Gave it to her because I love her. So sweet. So sweet. And the Friday before Jeopardy, she was like, I'm feeling like shit. And I was like, no, 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 no. You're all right. You're all oh, right. Now, now, you're, now then, you're a cut man. Yeah, said, no, no, then, no. You're good. Everything's fine. You're, you're fine, gonna be you just fine. Come on, get some champ. Sleep. You still got it, champ. Get some sleep. And she, we, she flew out to LA. Which I do not recommend flying across the country at this time, culturally, with a cough. I just want everybody to know that what is the most real version of Katie Nolan is the version that you can sense who really wanted to fucking win yeah, this. Yeah, of course I did. And that's why when I was watching, I was fucking nervous. I know. I didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. I knew, I felt how much knowing you, you wanted. Uh-huh. And I would dare say deserved. Well, she oh, put in the work. Thank you, Papa. Learned every country. 
the fact that learned you, every capital. <laughs> it's really the only Katie, thing we could Katie say. would come by, and I'd be like, "So, like, what are you doing?" And and, and she was like, "Memorizing all of geography." Mm-hmm. I know where things are now. That's pretty That's cool good. to me. Bulgaria, the capital, yeah. Sofia. Jesus, she's good. The main, the original main goal was I don't want to look stupid, and I don't think I did. So I'm proud of that. So for people who miss the first two parts of this trilogy. One of the great trilogies in, in, in fight history. <laughs> of course. Ali Frazier, uh, Katie Nolan versus Christopher Maloney, in which she makes an arch nemesis out of Detective Stabler. Mm-hmm. Um, a, life, a life enemy. <laughs> truly. Um, and then follows it up by getting into another blood feud and defeating Steven Weber from Wings. Who turned into a fan. Yeah, has been in our Instagram comments. Yeah, he sent me a message and asked me if I won, but he sent it on, on Monday or like Tuesday morning, and I was like, I can't say. So I didn't answer, but now I got. I have to remember to respond to him. I do now think, though, of Stephen Weber maybe watching this episode and seeing the photo of Katie Nolan's thumb and thinking to himself, "I did that." Turn turnabout really is fair yeah. play. It really he, he is. Cursed it, me. <laughs> it was like when um, when Frazier used to say mean stuff about Ollie getting Parkinson's, where he's like, "I did that," and you're like, "Damn, that really is a rivalry." <laughs> when someone's injured later, and he goes, "I'm the cause that was of me. that pain." Yeah. Katie Nolan had grabbed Stephen Weber's thumb and held it like a hunting trophy in front of all of America. Like well, a predator, like predator. God, truly. He <laughs> said it was a god thumb, so I just wanted it to get the respect she did the, it deserved. Yeah. With the spine of, <laughs> uh, of Stephen Weber above her in a tree. So no one will ever take that away from you. That's right. But I want to set the scene because you guys are at home. You guys know what happens. You guys are watching the Stone Cold Sober. Mm-hmm. You guys are... Yeah, sure. Yeah, stoned, <laughs> cold, so. <laughs> oh, there you go. I didn't realize it was, the wordplay was there. And so you press play, and you guys are. Wa- press play, watch it live. What What are you guys watching for as Katie Nolan's face appears right next to Lisa Ann Walter from The Parent Trap in Abbott Elementary, and Mo Rocca from CBS This Morning and The Daily Show, and uh, yeah, other things that involve guys wearing bow ties. Mm. Um, bow tie enthusiasts. Your mentality is what? Watching it? Yeah. Um, I mainly wanted to remember because I didn't remember anything. I remembered there was one block, so between a commercial and a commercial, where I got like nothing. Where all the questions, I remember going, what are these? I don't know any of these. Where I just felt like they were speaking a different language. And then I think I got one right at the before the commercial, like right at the end. And then I was like, Jesus. But what's crazy is watching... Obviously, we we're all witnesses, you know. That's what, <laughs> that's what. Was. But when she was taping, it was. It's interesting to watch somebody rewatch it and kind of know what happened, but not in what order. Because we were like she's saying, she knew there was a block, and there was a block. But she was watching, and she was like, "I think this is the block where I don't get anything right." And then it cuts to the primary coverage. Like that. Okay. <laughs> two questions in, David Murr's up in our. Good evening. We're coming back on the air because ABC News is now projecting that Donald Trump will win the New Hampshire Republican primary based on our analysis. I remember Muir, watching Muir? How do we say Muir. his name? Muir? David Muir? Muir? David Muir? He's been around Muir. for so long and I Muir. still am like, Muir. <laughs> I remember Muir. taking my remote control Muir. because they cut in with breaking news coverage Ugh. of the uh, New Hampshire Now, if you're watching primaries. live, primaries. Katie got a notification that up in Boston they had cut a little earlier. So she was like, oh, shit, they cut to primaries. And I was like, no, no, they haven't cut here, so maybe we're safe. And then two minutes later, they cut, and we're like, is this it? Is the episode done? Is it this was about- the Heidi game of Celebrity Jeopardy? Yeah, it was about to go, f- it, was, it was during commercial break, so we knew when it came back, it was going to go to Katie, who she's playing for, kind of a little, right. you know, banter with Ken. But before that, in that block where she thought she missed anything, she actually did f***ing awesome in the first block. I don't remember her doing as well. And Me she either. doesn't remember was, her either doing like, as well. I was like, well, I was actually doing okay. And at one point, I'm like, uh, at the couch, <laughs> like I had never seen it. I was like, look at that. Look at look at you, well, little we should, scientist. We should remind everybody that the way this begins, it has me marveling at Katie Nolan's thumb. College-level history courses for 200. Vassar offers Cold War America, a history course from 1945 until the fall of this European landmark in 1989. Katie. What is the Berlin Wall? Yes, it is. Damn, you're good on that buzzer, girl. I practiced. We'll come back with more Celebrity Jeopardy right after this. I know. 
It's very frustrating. It's very fr You'll get it, though. It'll come around. It's a, she's a fickle mistress. I know. My favorite. That was my favorite. That legitimately got a big pop out of me in the I room. I don't, um... I don't remember when you're filming it that they keep the first thing you say before they go to break. I so I just was making small talk with my new friend Lisa Ann, not the porn star. Got a lot of tweets about that, which yeah. I was like, guys, Many okay, are saying. make sure the joke wasn't already made before you make it for the fiftieth time. But anyway, but that was the biggest pop I got because that made me. That was the most Katie thing I saw. <laughs> well, I just wanted her to feel better about it because she's being and nice. Then she to won, while so uh, uh, there yeah, uh, teaches mission, me to be nice to my opponent. Mission accomplished. You were also though holding your hands in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, you had your hands down like Muhammad Ali actually, like yeah. would lower his hands, mm -hmm. like <laughs> confident. And so I'm thinking buzzer technique. I read a book. And by the way. Somebody called me out on it. Yeah. Somebody said you Jeopardy. can tell she read, uh, I think it's called like the technique of the buzzer or the buzzer of the, I forget. I got it on my Kindle and whenever I buy something on a Kindle, I don't see the cover. I forget what it's called. <laughs> so I apologize, but it was written by one of the, like a, a Jeopardy champion guy. Um, and it uh, says that after studying, he made like a makeshift buzzer of some sort and, and found a way to study it and found that the best way is to minimize the amount of muscles that go between not touching the button and touching the button huh. so that you aren't like having to move your arm and activate a whole series of motions. A kinetic chain, if you will. And instead it's will. just, you're just pulling. You pull your thumb back on the button. So are you, and your you hold arms are your straight? Arm, you hold one arm. I mean, I'm bending so that you can see. This but is like you, definitely a graphic animated gift that someone's gonna Arms are straight make something out of. and you're holding the arm, whatever uh, arm you feel more comfortable holding the clicker in and then you're just one motion to Can you explain it. it to me in self-defense uh, teacher <laughs> tone? All right, so what you're going to do, I've got it here. <laughs> yeah, I'm holding its weight here. Yeah, there it is. Now, if I pull this down, bam. Yeah, bam. Yeah. I'm buzzing in. Yeah, I, I like how I self-defense Beautiful, teacher. 10 out of 10. We're going to fucking nail it on command. Always turns into emerald. Oh, yeah, no. Bam. Well, we do that with our dog, right? We'll be laying there with the dog. Pete, when she used to wear, like, her little vest instead of a collar when we had her on, like, a little harness, and he would have to put it on her to take her for a walk, he would always talk about it like he was suiting her up to jump out of a plane. And he was like, all right, now this here is your shoe. Yeah. One once you jump. But we also do self-defense mechanism, uh, self-defense teacher with Myrtle where I'll have my hand around it and I go, now see my hand is free right here. You're going <laughs> to grab this hand and you're going to bend it over, choking the dog. So you nailed it. With he the chokes our technique. dog. I so I, with cuddles. I was extraordinarily optimistic after seeing that that's how that commercial break was entered mm -hmm. because shortly thereafter, we get to this. Uh-oh. Lisa Ann, what is The Handmaid's Tale? You got it. Mo, who is Willa Cather? Good for 500. Lisa Ann. Who is Edvard Munch? Good for 500. Mo. What is Paris? That's the capital. Lisa Ann. Who is Melville? Yes. Lisa Ann. What is Dune? Right. Lisa Ann. What is Dunkirk? Right again. Rodrigo Prieto was behind the lens for Greta Gerwig's Barbie and this 2023 Martin Scorsese drama. Katie. What is Killers of the Flower Moon? Yes, that is correct. <laughs> Apparently none of you had the four hours to see Killers of the Flower Moon. <laughs> yes. No, and Katie gets it right. So a whole segment basically has passed, Dan. Yeah. In which Katie has not buzzed, buzzed in. Buzzed in, got one yeah. answer. That was a whole run. Yes. yes. And so Dan Soder in the crowd is what? Well, I've realized I'm outnumbered. I am, uh, I'm with Rebecca Feff, her manager and Pepperman. friend. Yep. And we are hanging out. We're there. We're the support staff. We're there in the... And then around us is a group that's there with Lisa Ann. Walter. Mm. And Moraka's husband is on the end of the aisle with us. It's us three. And then everyone around us is there with Lisa Ann. So when Lisa Ann starts going on this run a little bit, much like in sports fandom, when the other team's fans start getting a little rowdy, you start getting a little rowdy. And... The question, uh, the Daily Double comes. Yes. After this run. Yep. Not only does the Daily Double come, but I want to make this perfectly clear. It's a, I, I know it's a geography because it's in the category was things that rhyme with Katie. And the second I saw that the double, that the Daily Double was geography, I reacted and Katie's the only other person in the world that saw this reaction. I reacted the same way I did when we went to the 49ers Chiefs Super Bowl and Fred Warner gave Patrick Mahomes his first interception of the postseason, where I stood up and went, that's what the f I'm talking about. And when I saw it was geography, I went, let's f***ing go. It's what you are if you reside in the small emirate nestled between Iraq and Saudi Arabia. What is Kuwaiti? You would be Kuwaiti, yes. And you're in second place. 
And then she got the daily double and I reacted too hard. I went too hard in the paint. You, I was you, like, let's you, go. You heard her say Kuwaiti. Yeah. I, I knew. And you I just lost your shit. The, the second I knew she was going to get the daily double, I was so fucking hyped. And, that, and uh, they did not like that. You can tell with just from the energy, they did not like the fact that their friend's opponent husband, whoever I am, is being... I showed up with a big K painted on my chest and started doing that kind of shit. Like, I, I got into it. Because I knew how important this was to Katie. I knew she was sick. I knew her thumb was dinged up. Okay? I'm over there in my ball gown with my diamonds on and my lace gloves, clapping every time she gets punched. Going, oh. uh, But it was... I was starting to get rowdy. And then I had to do, at a commercial break, do a little damage control. Because mm. it was pretty obvious that I was like... What is damage control? Yeah. Well, hey, guys, this is... How nerve-wracking is this? It's <laughs> legitimately small talk. Just making the most trans... Apparently, Dan's very good at small talk. Forced small talk. Get but stuck I'm, in an I'm, elevator with this guy. He can seem like he's interested without seeming too interested. Has it been 10 minutes or 40? We don't know. We've been talking about small sh I wanted to bring it together because I did feel like I overreacted. The tension... Mm. ratchets up. Yeah. And there's this one moment in Double Jeopardy um, where you objected to... Yeah, and yes, I stand it's by not it. And I did I too. It's it. not... Let's fucking watch this sh I, st I still think it's erroneous. Wacky fad obituaries for... 600. Not in obituaries. Here we go. <laughs> Funeral services for this line dance will be held on the nearest cruise ship featuring a special performance by Los Del Rio. Katie. Oh, no, line dance. Oh, um... Um, okay, sorry. Time's up, I'm afraid. Lisa Ann. What is the electric slide? Also in Because I lied. Oh. <laughs> that's the Macarena. Uh, Los Del Rio gave us the Macarena. That's what I thought, but that's not a line dance. You know what's so funny is that is absolutely the corner talking to the judge after a pay eye where he goes, I wasn't holding. Like, you can see on the cameras when they're, like, talking to the line judge. I wasn't if grabbing I, the jersey. If I can describe it live, um, and I don't think this is going to make any sense, but when you're hearing a clue and it's live, it, it maybe, and maybe it's my ADD, but you really just hear a couple words and you try to take those words and make it into something. And I heard Los Del Rio, right? That's what yeah. it is. And I knew that's the Macarena. It was stupid. I shouldn't have gone back to line dance. I should have just said it. Because either way, I was going to lose the money. I'd already buzzed in. Mm -hmm. I should have just said it. I think something in my brain was like, oh, you're going to look real stupid if you say the Macarena's a line dance. Is that Everyone's going to laugh was? at you. So line so dance I just itself. Instead, line dance made me go... Because Los Del Rio, I was like, Macarena. Yeah. And then I went, oh, shoot, line dance. Yeah, Did they I have just, another song? And instead of that, I should have just said Macarena, but I didn't. We are playing this under protest. Yeah. Um, line dance, just according to dictionary.com, or the Oxford uh, languages here, um, a country and Western dance in which dancers line up in a row without partners and follow a choreographed pattern of steps to music. Yeah, it was an erroneous... Choreographed pattern of steps to music. Somebody argued uh, to me that when you Western. when you do the hey, Macarena, and you jump and turn, yeah. that that makes uh, it a line dance. And I get it. I could see that. Again, the, the fault was my own. I should have just said Macarena. I clearly knew it, and I clearly second-guessed. You know what's crazy? So I just... When you just did that, it fired me up to do the Macarena. I don't know why. When you <laughs> do you want to like, just go through it right and now? When you, just, when you like did it, you go, and then you put your hands on your hips, and then you go, uh, Hi. <laughs> that weird noise. I was like, dude, I don't know why. Yeah, no wonder that, that thing out. caught on. Yes. It's like smelling <laughs> gas at a, at a gas station. You're like, what is that? What do you know about that? I used to know about it. Dan has no sense of smell. Sorry, go ahead. She's rubbing in my face because I'm disabled. Oh, that's right. He's not disabled. I am disabled. If you lose a sense. I guess technically, yes. Wait, so you're, what we're saying is that <laughs> gas being a thing <laughs> one would huff right. for Dan Soder is a Soder fact. No, yes. she of. thinks it is. He speaks on things he doesn't know. It's technically, I, it's a I soda know fact. what gas smells like. No, you don't. I had a sense of smell. You act when? like I've never had a sense of smell. I've had a sense of smell up until I was like 12? No, like 30. I don't know. I don't trust that. He says that, but I, don't the, trust that. I, I truly think COVID knocked it completely. You out. said it was smoking. You used it was, to say that was it was why smoking because well, he used to it. smoke and then breathe it out his nose, which I'm is a insane. Badass. <laughs> it's insane. Sorry, I'm a fucking badass. Insane. Also, started smoking at an age that'll make you gasp. What? What? what Twelve. Yeah. Was, yeah. Not, <gasps> still was, playing with action figures. Hell yeah. 
and that, smoke. I gotta say, so funny. That's pretty bad. Yes, yeah, the the, the joke funny. from your special that I found very funny was that he would take a break from his action figures and smoke. Be like, yeah. I gotta figure out what's going on. Now. I loved it. I love smoking cigarettes. Yeah. Please make so a non cancer cause. Yeah, make them good again. And then I'll be right back, baby. Baby, I'll anyway. be right back. <laughs> we go to triple jeopardy. We do, we as do. one does. And the category, I want to, I want to be. Uh, Inside of my head for a second here. Sure. Because when this category, blank and blank, gets revealed. You're like, dude. I am, I'm thinking to myself. Word category. Anybody who's watched Pablo Torre Finds Out knows that Dan Soder has declared Katie an amazing word category player. She is. And I'm like, she's going to nail this. And so here's how that went. Let's go with blank and blank for 1,200. Answer there. Let's go double. Now it's a chance for you, Katie, and you'll be wagering from the lead. How much will it be? I'm going to wager... 3,000. Okay. For 3,000, here's your clue. Blank and blank. Used together, these words are synonymous with intrigue and secrecy, and they sound much cooler than poncho and knife. What is cloak and dagger? You got it. You, you extend your lead. Great. Great stuff. Yeah, what was your thought process as you're trying to clearly, like, taking a, a beat to figure out how much money am I wagering on this? Uh, nothing. As I'm doing the, I'm gonna wager, my brain's just going, seven, three, four, five, <laughs> sixteen, all of it, none of it. I, there was none no, of it. There zero. Was no, I want a zero um, daily double. I would like to say that I was going, okay, carry the one, and if I do this, then I can, I don't you're have just. I'm not strategic. Doing the Did it feel in your I would like the the uh, lesson from this uh-huh. all to be that the least strategic person on earth is me, and I uh, wish I had more of that in me so that I could then do things like uh, I don't know, figure out what I should wager in situations like this or in Final Jeopardy. Can- but instead, it was just like, what am I comfortable losing? Right. I guess what is like, I won't be mad at myself if I get this wrong. So I didn't want to do like ten. I didn't want to do all of it because I knew. If you remember, my first um, daily double was Puce, I think, and I got that wrong. Like, there have been daily doubles that I think I'm going to get right, and I get them wrong. So I didn't want to, like, wager. What's wrong? No, I was asking, was there a, le- like, triple jeopardy of the semifinals? You got all three daily doubles. You did a true daily double, you did five, and then you did five. Was there any... Obviously, the difference is you were coming from behind in the semifinals, but now you've got the lead... Is, did that change the yeah, betting strategy the that easiest, much? The easiest uh, daily double bet I made was my all-in, which you would never think. But I was so far behind, yeah. and I needed it so bad that I was like, all of it. This is my only chance to catch up. This time, when you're in the lead, you're like, if I go all of it, I go to the back of the room if I miss it. And right. if I don't do enough, which I then later found out I didn't— um, so it's, I don't like that You're, part. I don't the, like where it's up to me. It's the reverse Kyle Shanahan. Katie Nolan with a lead. Yeah. Mm. I don't is like it. In her own head, the yeah, opposite like of it. 49ers coach Kyle Shanahan. Yeah. Because you don't want to squander your lead. Right. But you could, I could have pulled way ahead, but instead I was like, mm, I don't know. And so things tighten. Yeah. Moraka nails his own daily double. He goes all in. He went all in. And he said he wanted to make it a good game, which yep. he did. Well, I, I want this to be exciting for people. <laughs> Mo, so do it. I'm do gonna, it. I'm going to, um, uh, I'm gonna do it all. Whoa! I, I'm playing with the charity's money, and I feel really irresponsible. But go big or go home, or you're doing this get for the, shunned by society. You're doing this for the people. Yes. All right, for the viewers out there. Here's your clue, Mo. In I'm Just Ken, in 2023, this documentarian released his latest film, a four-hour series examining the rich history of the American buffalo. Who is Ken Burns? That is correct, yeah. And you just took the lead, man. Wow. $21,100 for Mo Rocca. God bless him. God bless him. 19, I love the 90s, too. <laughs> $19,500 for Katie Nolan. Lisa Ann Walters, 13800 Headed into Final Jeopardy. And you know how this works. Before the first commercial break, they reveal the category. And this is what they said. All three of you with very respectable scores, but it's going to come down to this. Here's the category you'll be making your wagers on, folks. Oh, God. Literary cliches. The clue is coming their way in just a moment. We'll be right back. 
Words. 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 And I words. stood up in my living room, as aforementioned, knowing that this is it's words. the meatiest she's got it. fastball. It's words. Category. I looked over at Dan in the audience and I, because I was like, all of it? And he was like, all of it. So I was like, okay, let's do it. Katie, you had nailed animal idioms. I know. You are, no one has been, I don't want to rub it in. We should just play Final yeah. Jeopardy. Yeah, go ahead. We are about to crown our celebrity Jeopardy champion and give away $1 million to their charity. The category is literary cliches. Let's reveal the clue. Many mystery fans blame The Door, a 1930 Mary Roberts Reinhardt novel in which a servant kills a nurse for this four-word cliche. 30 seconds, players. Good luck. Lisa and Walter will begin with you in third place, but with an impressive $13,800. Thank you. What four-word phrase did you write down? I what love is this. The butler did it. That is correct. Ah. I apologize. So obviously, I didn't get it right. Ah. Ah. But wait, I love this. Ending. The butler did it. Lisa, and you're going to add to that score. What did you wager? Almost everything. Wow, Ooh. twenty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. Right and here. for the moment, you're in the lead. Huh. Katie Nolan had second she goes, place with huh. nineteen thousand five hundred. I love it. Did she know the butler no. did it? No. Ah, uh, the doctor is in. I'm four afraid words. not. It Half is four credit. words. I'm afraid not. <laughs> Half credit's okay. great. So we're not going to be able to accept that. Oh, you wagered everything. Dropping you down to zero. Big wager. Big wager, oh, Katie. Oh, boy. Moraka had the lead. <laughs> that's my favorite. That's, the most, that's one of the most Katie moments of the whole thing. <laughs> you know the butler did it? He did what it. Is, I'm so sorry. He did not. He wagered. $20,000, knocking him down to $1,100. That eruption that you heard? Not from Lisa, but from the crowd, was exactly like. Remember that third and fourteen when the Chiefs picked it up against the Niners, and everyone around you stood up and clapped. I was like, <laughs> like I was just like, oh yay! The Butler did it. Never. Uh, speaking of which, has never, I'm sorry to... um, has never just. Um, I never would have guessed. That. I didn't get that I either. Was, for some reason, I was focused on the nurse part of it, and I went, um, I went full peanuts because the doctor is in. It's from the peanuts. Um, <laughs> Lucy's sign. It's Lucy's sign. Uh, but I couldn't think. I was like four words: nurse. Those were, for some reason I did not focus on the word servant, and I think that's because I don't like to use terms like that. Oh my understand? god, you'll never. Have I don't a think Kelly of a Osborne butler moment. as a servant. You know, I think of him as my contemporary. Donald Trump. In the sense that who is going to scrub your toilets? That, uh, <laughs> No, but it's, so I just, it didn't, and then people were pointing out to me that, like, after the Malcolm Butler interception in the end zone, there was merch that said, Butler did it, and I'm like, I didn't even, it didn't even. That's also an obscure, nothing, like. Nothing. Not to me. It shouldn't yeah. be to me, but yeah, I did, true. that never, right. you know, there's some right. things that you no, just, until, good, and now I bet, now I bet I'm going to see that Everywhere. phrase everywhere because it's just never really registered with me and now it's going to be the only thing I, like, I see. I like I'm going to come home and turn on a black light and all over our walls is going to say butler the butler did it. it. The butler did it. I'm like, oh no. I will be murdered and it will be the butler who did it. It'll just some, this is all going to be part of an arc. A guy delivering you room service is going to give you PTSD. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. Just the psychology of you've just lost and your emotional temperature goes to where? Honestly, and I don't want to just sound like I'm saying this. Honestly, it, I think if it had been Mo, I would have been up, like more upset. I, Mo upset. I, oh, um, Lisa Ann was just so sweet, and she was really smart, and she um, and she played the game really well. And she just, was super stoked to win. The look on her face when she won. She almost started crying. She, she did. did. She cried. Yeah, she, she like she, had the tears. way she like gasped and was like. <gasps> It because was, you could, she said like, "Ha ha, I'm in the lead for now." She did not think at all that she was going to win, and so when she did, I, it, I was shocked that Mo got it wrong, um, and I just was, I was really happy for her. She uh, multiple times was like, "My mom was such a big Jeopardy champion," and that clue I knew because of my mom. It really yeah. like really was a moment for her, and she was very sweet and just so excited about it. It was. That was fun to watch. And I'm also shocked. I was mad and very... Yeah, I have you as like the Dallas Cowboys fan who's punching his television. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I don't get that angry. I get like... Um, when people I love lose, there there's it's, it's different than uh, cheering a team you love. Because w- when you're cheering a team you love, there's frustration, but there's a distance because you don't know that team. You don't know those people. You just cheer them on. When it's someone you love, there's a connection, so there's a, an immediate sadness. Uh, followed by an anger, 
and then back to sad. It's a sad sandwich. Mm. You just got, you got the bread is sad in the middle, the, the meat is angry. And you're like, damn it. But then a swell of pride. Give me a side of pride. Because I was just like, and th the first thing I said to her, I was like, you did so f yeah, what's the post game like? How do you Just when, super proud when do of you her. guys get to It was the, honestly very I felt the same, not exactly the same, but I felt pretty close to how I felt after she had won the semifinals, which right. was I was just like I kept trying to tell Katie like Look how cool this is. Look how cool you are. You just did so fucking awesome. And you almost won it. You missed one big question that cost you the game, but you were fucking in it. And you were in it till the end. And that was, I was just very like, and still am. We were watching last night. I was like, this is so cool. I'm so proud of you. I kept like hitting her and high fiving like I had never, like I wasn't there because. We love Jeopardy. We watch Jeopardy. It's a, it's a thing that we that through the pandemic we got into with certain characters. We just R.I.P. Trebek. Mm. You know, not liking Jennings as the host and loving him now as the host, getting to meet him, all that stuff. Katie's arc on the show, beautiful run, and something that it was like one of those things where just as her you know fiance, I'm just like, dude, this is so fucking cool. And I'm so proud of her. And, she, and the way she busted her ass, like, to learn before the finals, it was just awesome. And it was like, we learned it was Maraca, and it was kind of like, oh, shit. Right. <laughs> like when, it found and out, when I found out, I was like, okay. Yeah, when we were like, at least, nothing well, against I mean, Lisa and Walters, I, 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 we were I like, they excited. But when we both found out it was Maraca, it was I, like, you're fighting, you're fighting Tyson. Yeah. I should we say. We were like, oh, fuck. When I got admitted into Harvard University, yeah. mm, um, I went to the uh, admitted students gathering. And the person who spoke was fucking Mo Louise. Rocca. Really? Yes. Oh, really? He was the literal vision of like I'm, the smart guy. Yeah. It's like He's you like stereotypical can be like, smart man. Truly. He looks That's like why like Katie him. staying in it and doing as well as she did. I was like, come oh, on. Oh, it was like Bob, the, you're, uh, you're you're unbelievable. She's just the best. I'm the most bummed that I didn't understand Final Jeopardy wagering so I could have gotten more money for the Association for Women in Sports Media because I I, I think $100,000 for them is, is going to be a lot of money. Yeah. Um, they are, I didn't want to say this on TV even though they told me to. It was, the charity has been, since the pandemic, I know a lot of businesses have been struggling. They took a real hit from, you know, campuses going online and, and, and all that and they have been financially struggling. So I think that like this money can really, really help. And if you're listening to this and it matters to you as well, you can also donate because I, I think they'll take any money they can get. Um, but I do wish that I had gotten just um, a little bit more money for them. And instead, I was trying to get them the million and ended up getting them uh, because I went all in less than that. But I what think are you going to do? I think you did a really good job of explaining to America what this organization was in a real way. Thanks. And also, I think you persuaded everyone in America that it's a worthwhile cause, except for Christopher Maloney. Yeah, he still thinks it's dumb. Yeah, he still f***ing hates your guts. Well. Damn, Stabler's out there on the streets I, cleaning I it up. I still believe in Lyme disease for him, so. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Tick that box, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Mm. So, you know, we did it. We did Jeopardy. It happened. And I think this sets me up for a nice redemption arc. Yeah. Also, Poach. I, I still take issue with Poach not being correct. Hey, maniacs. Should I boil my lobster or do this to it in a basket? Which I've heard gets the meat more tender. Katie. What is Poach? Sorry, no. Ah! Lisa Ann. What is steam? Steam. That's the better wordle word. Yeah. The one syllable. Um, it was best clue. wordle words. It was, yeah. so it was five letter words. And it said, it's a way to cook lobster that it makes it more juicy. And I said, P O A C H, poach. And they, the answer was steam. steam. I'm also just interested by like how people reach out to you. Okay. So this. let me say the hardest part was leading up to it. I saw a lot of people, one of them is bookmarked, and I have to actually send this guy a Venmo today. I saw people say, like, can't wait to watch Katie Nolan take it all tomorrow night. Like, I know Katie's going to win. Some guy said, I signed up for Hulu and have to pay because the week trial is up and I want to watch you win the final. And so I'm just like, I lose. <laughs> you just want to say, like, it's a, don't do it. I lose. <laughs> but you can't because you sign a very big NDA. That's like, don't tell anybody anything. Um and so people just kept being like, can't wait to watch Katie Nolan kill it tonight. Oh, people, in, people on the other side of this glass, by the way, were like, so what do you know? Asking me. And I'm like, I yeah. don't. I authentically don't. Katie has said nothing. 
Yeah. And so it sucked um, watching people root for you when you know you lose. That's when I said the thing about athletes is like they get to at least experience it when it happens. They don't have to watch everybody watching it. Like I saw people throughout the episode be like, oh, she's got this in the bag now. I can go to bed or something. And I'm just like, oh, I don't. Um, But afterwards, everybody has been very, very nice. Everyone was like, you did a great job. I like that you went all in at the end. There have been a couple people that have been like, you should have wagered exactly this amount. That would have been the way that you would win if he got it wrong. And I'm just like, my brain doesn't work like that. My brain does not work like that, but it also does work Also not in the helpful way that, right now. I know. Like I, it's like, <laughs> yeah, the, the wagering thing okay, this I'll, morning I'll do bonkers. that next time, I guess. Oh yeah, um, that situation I'll definitely be in it. Yeah, <laughs> totally. I'll take this into account when this exact situation, ha- thanks for the numbers. Um, but it, everybody's been really, really nice and, um, which is good because I really did, I had so much fun and I think I realized when we were filming the final that like, Jeopardy is a game that's very hard to replicate outside of literally Jeopardy. Like, even when we play it at home and it's we have to set the rule of, like, do you have to wait till he's done asking the question before you can say the answer or do you just, like, yell it out? The buzzer system is so complicated that there really is no, like, let's play Jeopardy at home. Um, I've since learned that every Jeopardy clue ever and its answer it, or question, I guess, is available on – they have, like, a website that keeps track of every – episode of Jeopardy, what was asked, what was answered, all that, uh, which is very cool. And I use it all the time now. Um, but it's very hard to do that. And so I'm like, this is an experience that I've wanted to be able to participate in that I'm only going to get to do these three times. So I might as well enjoy it, have fun doing it. Like I got to play Jeopardy and it wasn't some like party where somebody made up the answers and had to, it There's was a like a right real thing. guy right now cutting thing. construction paper listening to this. <laughs> He's cutting blue construction paper to do the things. He goes, well, that's what I was going to do this weekend for my birthday. It's still like you can do it, but you just don't have the technology to do the like, but it's just, I don't know. I really loved it. It was really fun. It was, um, I don't know. In hindsight, it was cool because I guess a lot of people thought I was stupid and now they don't. <laughs> there were so many people that were like, I didn't know you were smart. I'm like, that's crazy. But okay. <laughs> I've been talking Thanks. down barrel for a lot, most of my career. Uh, I, I think a lot of people assumed that things were written for me, which just then brings up a whole new bunch right. of frustration. Which leads me but to we'll a charity that A-W-S-M, I want you to know about. A-W-S-M, <laughs> women in sports media, not stupid, very smart. Oftentimes write their own thing, believe it or not. They let us do the... Typing and the talking. Um, but no, it was just really fun. It was a really fun thing. I know it was make a wish. I know, as everyone has been pointing out to me on the internet, that Mina and Pablo would both beat me probably I if we would played. like to say that what I found out watching Katie Nolan play Celebrity Jeopardy is that she would have wiped the f***ing floor with me. I don't know. Not, I don't know. no. I, I mean that. That's not just a thing that I'm saying. You, it, it was really legitimately had, impressive. <laughs> it was my sport. My it was buddy, sports for me. My buddy Joe called me. And he was watching at home, and he was like, he had it paused. He was watching the semifinals, and he called me. So when I was in Kansas City. He goes, I'm watching the semifinals with Katie. I think I could take her in Jeopardy. And I had to do this real moment where I go, Joe, I love you. You're hilarious. You're one of my favorite people. Who is this? Joe Alexander. The guy that I did comedy with that he left. We're still friends. Yeah. Joe Bo. Uh, Joseph Bo. But he, um, I was like, she'd kick the shit out of you. I go, I play, I, we watch Jeopardy every night. She would f- floor you. And then he went, man, all right, yeah, because I'm watching it. And I'm like, dude, you just have no idea. <laughs> I watch Jeopardy with her every night. There, she would smoke me. Like the That's amount not of true. answers. He could do it too. The and amount I think he of will. answers that she just has. And we're not talking about celebrity Jeopardy questions because obviously they soften, they nerf them a little bit. But like when we hit certain topics, dude, she's on top of it. She's very good. And then there's other topics where I'm just tap out. Yeah, but that's Jeopardy. Plays. I don't know. What to think oh, about composers, plays. composers, classical plays, composers. Mu- uh, Would you uh, get that? That was rough. Mo Rocco was on top of it, though. I got Tchaikovsky. You did. It's one like very famous, very popular. There's certain subjects that we both know to guess one or the other. Ansel Adams with photography. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tchaikovsky with composers. Yeah. Or I know Tchaikovsky. I knew you keep saying that. I did know that no, one. No, no, I took you told dance history that... in college, and Swan Lake is a you, ballet. You told me that it was a complete guess. No, I didn't. You're lying. <laughs> Um, there's also a, a, in Jeopardy lore, there's, I forget what they're called, Pavlovs, which mm. are like, if they say this Swedish physicist, those two words together Nobel. should bring up a name for you. Um, and I, people study those, which I think is really smart. 
does this change how you will watch Jeopardy going forward? The first, so, okay, one thing they don't tell you about Jeopardy is that your wrong answers or the ones you miss will haunt you forever. I was going to also ask um, that. What are you, you most like, haunted a, by? A, a, um, appetite for destruction, not getting that in the semifinal. That hurt my feelings. Uh, one Dance by Drake, not getting that in the semifinal hurt my feelings. And, like, anytime those things come up now, like, if somebody plays that song, I'm like, ugh. <laughs> Which isn't its fault. It's my fault. But I'm just like, ew, turn this off. Um, like the everything you got wrong or everything you didn't buzz in on but you had right, like those things are just going to haunt you forever. When we first came back from the final, from losing the final, I think we took some time off at Jeopardy. I don't think we watched it for like a month. Weeks. Yeah, we have a backed up DVR now because we didn't talk about it. We didn't like address it specifically like we are not going to watch Jeopardy. But like because he loves me and is a sweetheart, it just did. We didn't. We watched other stuff during dinner. And I think it was just we needed a break. I needed a break from like, oh, here it is. The thing I just really wanted to win and I lost. Let's watch it again. Yeah. But now we're back. We're back into watching it. You and keep, I still love it. You keep, uh, you know. If you lose the Super Bowl, you keep ESPN off for a couple weeks. Just for a couple, yeah, you don't want to hear the... I don't want to see the parade coverage. Just try, not trying to see that stuff. But look, I think in general, it, culturally right now, we're in a place where it's not cool to take an L. So I'm proud to take my L. You took a great L. And to say that I worked hard, I had fun. I think I did... Um, I've seen a lot of people say that I've got a new fan. Unfortunately, I have nowhere to direct them to right now except this podcast. I don't have anywhere Welcome. to send them. Um, but I, I, um, I think I'm proud of the way that I perform. And I also feel like if I were to get another shot, that I could I could go at it again. So I I'm so you are formally calling out Lisa no, Ann Walters. No, no, I loved her. To I come really to did. Pablo She's Torre so sweet. Finds out. You ain't a real champion. You a paper champion. Did I say something that happened after the taping that I thought was really cool, which was Michael Davies pulled Katie aside while they were doing the post game interview with Lisa Ann. <laughs> You know the trend right now in sports that got uh, losers of football games, of bowls, or of championships. You see the one player stand out there in his yes. full uni and watch the trophy in celebration. someone else's confetti. Yeah, that's, yes. That was Katie. Oh. Katie was standing there. I wanted full, to listen to what she full said. Oh, yeah. This is Kevin Durant, was... James Harden, Russell Westbrook, yeah. arm in arm, watching the Miami Heat. Yeah, she was just <laughs> sitting there with confetti coming down, watching it. <laughs> she had her hands on her shoulder pads. And she, you know, she had her mouthpiece in her helmet, and she was just sitting there watching. And then, like you know, equipment guys are coming up and patting her, going. You had a good season, and she's just sitting there watching. And <clears throat> there's this really cool thing where Michael Davies pulled Katie aside, and I was with, uh, you know, Fef, Katie, and I were together, and he showed her she had the highest percentage of buzzes to completions. She had the highest shot uh, field goal percentage of right. anyone so in the this is the executive producer of Jeopardy, Michael Davies. Michael Davies, the executive producer of Jeopardy. Highest field goal percentage in the tournament. <laughs> Book it. Pretty big. Big goddamn news to me. Thanks, honey. Yeah. The real, the real God thumb. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was this one. No uh. God, no masters, just thumb. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I love it. He's got some real talents, my guy. Um, yeah, man, that was, I'm very proud of you. It was you fun, it's awesome. over. It was we're, fun, we're, it's we over. Jeopardy hit. all legitimately. Thank you. Proud of you, thank and, you, thank you. And, and, and grateful for letting us um, chronicle your engagement through the lens of a uh, network game show. Truly, though, thank you for letting me come here and talk about it because I think if I all I had was like a Twitter to just like respond to people, it would be a mess. And being able to come here and kind of like decompress is really helpful. And, and you know, thank you to everybody who rooted for me. It was very encouraging, even though I knew what happened. <laughs> um, it was really, it was nice to see. Yeah, I just got to say that that relationship makes me happy. Um, it warms my heart to know that Katie Nolan and Dan Soder are there for each other like that, just as my production staff is for me. And I want to thank them here. Michael Antonucci, Ryan Cortez, Sam Daywig, Juan Galindo, Patrick Kim, Neely Lohman, Rachel Miller-Howard, Ethan Schreier, Carl Scott, Matt Sullivan, Chris Tuminello, and Juliet Warren. Studio engineering by RG Systems. Post-production, as always, by Angie W. Post. Our theme song by John Bravo. We will talk to you next week. <laughs>